All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show. I'm your host, Frankie Slauson, and today we got a special guest. You might not know the name, but you may know uh, his character from uh, Salute Your Shorts. The guy is Michael Ray Bauer, and he played Donkey Lips on the show Salute Your Shorts. And welcome to the show there, Michael. Uh, thank you, brother. I'm surprised you're, you're recording me. You should use a desktop recorder, baby. Yeah, I... See, I, I just, I, I thought about that too, but just like, uh, I just, every everything that I find online, they, they want you to pay for, and, and I, I just want to try to find some free stuff, and, and it seems like they don't have much free stuff nowadays online. For oh, there's plenty online. of free stuff, you just gotta look, brother. <laughs> Maybe you gotta hook me up or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, not trying to stop your interview halfway through it, but buy one of these, man, for your little camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, tripod, car. okay. Yeah. And you set it you set it right on the desk and you film the screen. Yeah, I you know, they sent me a, a smaller one like that, but I don't know, it just did I don't know, with the with the way it looks and whatever, it just doesn't look like it, I, I'm afraid that it's gonna tip over or something like that, just because of this big old window and everything. A big old screen, and not, but and not a problem. As long as you got the um the the audio recording from both, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get video and audio recording pretty much uh, as great as I can from here, so but anyway, okay. so what have you been up to these yeah, no days? Problem. What have you been up to these days, sir, man? Uh, uh, well, I'm pretty much a father. I take care of an elderly father and a recovering brother. So I'm pretty much like, like I said, a father. You know, I'm okay. just a homebody. And I work, you know, I'm, sh I'm still trying to make it in this industry, which I already have. But um, I still... I still act. I'm starting to produce. Um, I do anything I can just to entertain. That's all I care about. Yeah, it seems like uh, uh, you you still have a, a love for the, the the business anyway. I mean, trying to make it. How long have you been uh, in Hollywood? Uh, well, I've, I've lived here most of my life. Not exactly in Hollywood, but on the out, outskirts. Uh, I've, I've been a product of Hollywood ever since I was born. So okay. But oh. what am I? Do you want you want to know my age? Trust me, I'm I'm pretty old. <laughs> well, you were born in the seventies, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll say late seventies. <laughs> okay, so nineteen seventy five. So that'd probably make you either thirty five or thirty six, or maybe even thirty seven. Yeah, shut up. You know <laughs> hey, I'm twenty nine. I'm I'm only turned twenty nine here uh, next Sunday. So, yeah, I feel pretty old too. So don't worry, it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, uh, uh, what was life like uh, growing up before you uh, started doing the Salute Your Shorts and and kind of explain what you know where you went to school and just basically growing up. What was life like growing up for you? Well, I mean, I didn't know Salute Your Shorts was in my future. Yeah. So, life growing up was more of just wanting to explore. I I fell in love with Glee Club. Um, I used to get bullied and, and stuff growing up, but I would always try to make people laugh. And they had a glee club where you had to be in the fifth grade to be in it. And at that time, I think I was in fourth grade or third grade. I, like, I was that aware of what was going on. And I stayed in the auditorium after school till four or five o'clock because that's when my father would get home from work. And I didn't want to be out with the neighborhood kids. And I just I just didn't want any trouble. So... I would sit there and dream of performing and singing and acting. And then finally, when I hit fifth grade, I just decided to, you know, uh, apply and become a part of the Glee Club and the rest of history. Okay. So, uh, so when, uh, when you got older, obviously you, uh, heard about them doing a, a show called Salute Your Shorts. Now, how many people, uh, did they, uh, cast? I mean, like, not to cast, but I mean, like, uh, like, uh, audition for, like, how to get your part? I'm not exactly sure. Like, um, we just recently did a reunion where we, we, we had to explain this. And um, they made two different pilots, which is the first episode to sell to Nickelodeon. And the first pilot audition, I auditioned at least three times. And there was plenty of other people auditioning against me. So I'm not quite sure how many there were. But there were a ton. And then even after that pilot... They made another pilot like six months later where I auditioned again another three or four times. And there was more actors for the part 
that I already did. So I, I must have done something right. But, yeah, there was a lot of people up for these roles. I remember there was some good quality talent. Um, like, I can guarantee you, back in the days, uh, Jack Black was real young. He was up for the role. Oh, wow. Whether it was Donkey Lips or Michael, but I'm assuming it was Donkey Lips. But um, <laughs> they were in the auditions and um, a few others. I just can't remember their names, but I, I became friends with Jack many, many years ago through auditioning. I can only imagine what a young Jack Black would be like. <laughs> well, there's a couple movies out there that you could watch. I mean, it's an interview about me, but I guess we'll talk about Jack. <laughs> That's okay. I, I don't care. No, no, he's in a movie called Airborne. I was actually in that movie as well, but I got cut out. Um, that was like our first movie working together. Um, so, yeah, look it up, Airborne. Airborne. It's a skating movie with Seth Green, Jack Black, and some other surfer guy. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a, a cool, cool movie. I like I like the, you know, little independent film. Is it like an independent film or is it? No, nah, man, it was a big theater film. It was film a big theater film. Uh, it, yeah. sounds, it sounds familiar, but I just don't. I just can't picture it in my mind. I guess. Yeah, now look, you'll find it. I'm sure it's on Netflix and all these. It's a pretty good movie. Jack does a really good character. Okay. So what what movies have you done, then? Have you done a whole lot in your career? Uh, well, I'd have to look at my IMDb. And <laughs> count, but I, I think in terms of movies, whether they were good or bad, I think I've done, like, over 20. Okay. Any, any of them that anybody would recognize at all? I suppose you'd have well, to look I, on your IMDb, of course, so. But everybody has their favorites, um, but the big ones to me were like the big budget ones, which were like a movie called Evolution with Ivan Reitman. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that was like an $80 million movie, and I, I was supposed to be a star after that, but it didn't work out. So, hey, life throws your curveballs. And Dude, Where's My Car? I mean, it was only a like a $10, 12000000 million movie, but it did very well and made a lot of money, so... Those are kind of the big, big ones. And then I've done a bunch of B or C list movies and I've helped friends out and, you know, got a hundred dollars a day and right. <laughs> just to, just to do whatever, just to keep entertaining and let the world know that I'm still working. I'm not famous, but I'm still working. Uh, yeah. And, and a lot of people probably think that, and, and, and anyway, I think that too, like, like, uh, you would only just had like the salute your shorts was like your big 15 minutes of fame, but it's like. But if you're still acting and stuff like that, who knows? Maybe it's not. It's. I'm pretty sure it's not the end for you. I'm sure you you will find your 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 moment again. You know, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I'm okay with it if it doesn't happen. I'm really not into acting for the fame. Like that's just a that's just an after product of entertaining. And like, I mean, if if it happens, I mean, hopefully a person is prepared because they're probably going to have to live their life in solitude. And, you know, learn how to be their own best friend because going out in public, if you're really that famous, it's just just really hard. But I'm not in it for the fame. I'm I just like entertaining. Now, so. um, and to be honest with you, you know, you said Salute Your Shorts might have been my 15 minutes of fame. But uh, my fame, it sounds real dumb, was, like I said, like the first time walking into a movie theater. Yeah. And even if I had, I had one line in, or two lines in a movie called She's Out of Control. And watching that when you're a 10-year-old or 11-year-old kid, seeing yourself on the big screen of your local mini-mall theater, and you come on screen and people laugh, that's <laughs> way bigger than 15 minutes of fame. Oh, sure. So everything, everything else after, I mean, it's a blessing, but those moments are so great. So did you always want to be a, an actor? Was that, obviously you probably said you did, but, uh, but like, what, what got you into it in the first place? Well, yeah, uh, going back to what I said in the beginning, um, I got bullied a lot. Okay. So that got me into it. I stayed and I watched Glee Club, and I just enjoyed them performing because they had confidence and they were on stage, and I just really wanted to to be a part of it. You know, I, I've always enjoyed making people laugh because, again, when you're getting bullied, you, you resort to laughter. Yeah. So you try to make them laugh so they don't, so they don't bully you. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta look at the positive of it, you know. I mean, uh, so recently, you you just uh, got done doing a, a tw I'd say about a twenty year reunion or or twenty two year reunion or, or or close to that anyway. Since uh, Salute Your Shorts came out with the the, the cast and and, uh, and some of the crew, but 
not everybody was able to make it. I noticed. Yeah, yeah, it was. A, it was. A, we called it a twenty-year reunion because it sounds better on the tongue. Sure. I mean, from the start of the show, it's actually a twenty-two yep. and a half-year reunion. But when the show ended, it's twenty years later. Okay. Um. Yeah. Not everybody can make it. Um. But one of them was in Haiti. They sent a special message, and um. Uh, Dina or Heidi, uh, she is just really, she has a, a big life, you know, she's a, she's a lawyer, a paralegal, or not a paralegal, she's a lawyer per se, now she is officially, but so she just she just couldn't leave work and she just had her own issues. And of, of Blake Senate, uh, he was um, in the second season, he wasn't able to show up because I think he's in Arizona, like playing music for the his band called The Elected. Okay. But everybody else showed up. I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, even if we all have issues or whatever, everybody showed up and came together as a family. So I recommend you guys look it up online. There'll be a few versions gone by the end of this weekend that I'm going to upload as well. Yeah, I, I saw uh, one person uploaded, like, a 56 or 57-minute video on it. Yeah, yeah. It is an hour long, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, was it kind of a, a, a an emotional... You're kind of just happy to see everybody, or, or have you have you seen everybody besides prior to the reunion off and on since the show was done? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, you know, we all got our own different lives, and we all have our own paths. Um, we don't see each other as much as we'd like to. Um, we A lot of us definitely communicated. I can't yeah, go into who commu- communicates with who all the time, but uh, we communicate, you know, on a, on a basis, and... We don't see each other that that much, so it was pretty dang cool to have a fan try to put this all together and get us all to show up. And again, everybody came through, and it, it's like a family reunion, you know. All we needed was some barbecue ribs. <laughs> then, then, then it would have been a family barbecue. Oh reunion. heck yeah! So so uh, it was pretty great. So a fan put this together. Yeah, a fan, a fan on Facebook um, named Devin Whitehead. Oh wow! Oh, that's kind of cool. I mean. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, of the days of when uh, Jimmy Fallon was trying to get the Saved by the Bell cast together, and instead he got, like, the California Dreamin' cast or whatever. Something like that, almost like. <laughs> what the hell? They had a California Dream panel? I, I, I well, want to be... I guess I so. Or that something. show. Well, I guess, uh, uh, like, right after... Uh, well, he, he uh, Jimmy Fallon tried to get the, the Saved by the Bell cast, and not everybody could make it, so he, he decided, well, why don't we get the California Dreamin' cast, and... So that was like maybe a year or two after he uh, uh, beca- took over for Conan. So. Yeah, no, I, I was just making a joke because I was on <laughs> California Dreams for like four episodes. Okay. So come on, baby. I should have I should have been in that panel. <laughs> well, you you probably just had like a guest role, I suppose, huh? Yeah, they're called cameos when, ah, when yes. you're famous. They're called cameos when you're famous. Oh, sure. <laughs> so, uh, so you got any, any cool memories that... Uh, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but just any memories from uh, Salute Your Shorts that uh, you'll never forget? Um, I mean, <laughs> the, the answer is so blasé, but yeah. just just looking back on it, I don't have a huge family in life. Uh, so just being together and like realizing that I actually had sisters and yep. brothers, and then the crew members became like, you know, older brothers, and it... The memory to me that I take away is just kind of like a family atmosphere, like, you know, fighting but loving each other and just going through everything and working together every day. Uh, I mean, of course, there's individual memories. And I guess maybe the final episode is a big memory for me. Um, it's called Anawana Incorporated, where they gave Donkey Lips, like, the, a company, and I kind of made a success out of the, the, the Birdhouse company. Um that was the final episode, and we all knew going into that 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 might be the final episode because the writer and creator left the show around that time. So it was just a really tough week when we all kind of knew that it was coming to a head, yeah, and we still ha- and, and we still had to perform. And the show is a metaphor for life. Like they all had a company, and then they gave it up at the end, and then it's weird. Donkey Lips took it over. And sold it to Jesse Bartlett. And then if you think about the show, again, they all gave it up. The writer kind of gave it up to Nickelodeon. And then at the end, Donkey Lips, me, 
yeah. are still kind of releasing it and, you know, putting footage online, just trying to keep it going because a lot of them are not doing that. Yeah, you uh, also were, like I sent you an email a while ago, or a couple of days ago about uh, the, I saw the sets online that you uh, have on your site. Now, you said uh, there's some legal issues with that, or? Well, I mean, you know, Nickelodeon and Viacom, they own the show, and they're really not doing anything with it um, for whatever reasons, and I just, you know, decided to try to find his best um, quality footage or episodes as I could and you know I home produce it and then I put it out you know for like 10 15 20 bucks sure and I, it cost me ten dollars by the time eBay or all these other companies charge you and I probably barely make enough money to make the second one it's not really like I'm doing it to support myself in a living it's more like that I just want to keep the show out there and introduce it to a new fan base Oh, yeah. But um, the truth is, you know, just, of course, you know, every once in a while, if you have it on big websites like eBay or whatever, the big companies, they just fight, and then they send you letters saying, take it off, take it off, or we're yeah. going to, you know, take your whole family and your kidney away. Has it has it done pretty well, though? I mean, like, have you sold a lot of copies? Uh, it's under 50. No, 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 you know, it might be like under 60. Okay, for both DVD and Blu-ray? Yeah, nobody's got money. <laughs> yeah, this damn economy, you know, everybody's broke. <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably been like thirty or forty DVDs, maybe maybe fifty. I don't know. I don't keep count. Okay. And then like like twenty five Blu rays. So, so it's under a hundred. So is so is the Blu ray quality a little bit better than the DVD, or or would it be more of the same? Well, yeah, the the DVDs on a, a dual layer. See, I don't, I'm not very technical with all this stuff. It's on a dual layer, eight point five gigabyte disc. Oh. And for some reason, when you put, like, 26 episodes plus a couple of bonus things, it gets a little grainy. But, uh -huh. I mean, it's still it's still pretty dang good. But, and then the Blu-ray, apparently, you can hold, like, they said three or four times that, like, 25 or 30 gigs. Yeah. So the Blu-ray is much, much better. Okay. Meaning it allowed the, uh, the formatting of the show to be bigger, so it looks a lot better. But it has a damn watermark. The guy that made it for me charged me. He's like, he sent it to me, and all of a sudden it has a watermark of the program. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, oh, a watermark of the software that they use. To, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? We're used to watermarks nowadays because everything you watch has a watermark on the bottom or the top, like yeah. everything. Yeah. So I, I, it doesn't bother me. I'm just happy to have it on a Blu-ray. I stick it into my PlayStation and I just, I love it. <laughs> well, that's cool that you can, uh, that you try to keep it going. I mean, I, I, I did, they did show it on uh, Nick Teens, didn't they? Like the Are You or uh, the 90s yeah, or all that? Yeah, Teen Nick or something Teen like Nick, that. Yeah. They showed, I think they showed like seven episodes. But They're I wish. kind of like holding it or something. Yeah, I wish they would show more because uh, we have it on our digital box and everything at home here, but. Uh, uh, too bad they don't show it like on, on Nickelodeon again, you know, just for the heck of it, you know. Well, one good thing that might come out of them not showing all the episodes is because they know everybody has DVRs nowadays. <laughs> so maybe they're only showing like six or seven or eight episodes because maybe they are planning on a disc or a, a release. Yeah, you never because, know. Because they know everybody will just put it on their DVR and leave it there now. Yeah. So may maybe that's their ploy. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure either. I'm surprised they haven't put it on DVD or Blu-ray yet. I mean, just because, you know, they've done it with all the other shows, like Rugrats and, and Hey Dude and, you know, and, and Doug and all that. They've done that, but I don't know why they just, uh, I don't know. When they, I guess when there's so much content out there, they they have to be picky or choosy of what they produce but or what they put out. Well, like, again, they want the 90s or all that to run for like four years. So every <laughs> year they'll probably release seven episodes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Plus all that and Rugrats and Keenan and Kel, they did like what, probably two hundred shows each. Yeah, pretty much. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. So whatever. We did like twenty six. Yeah, but still, I mean, even though the show uh, didn't last that long, it's still you know a lot of people remember it. It's almost like the Honeymooners that only lasted thirty nine episodes, but look, people still remember that from you know from when it started and everything. So you, you, you're definitely. You're definitely an old soul. <laughs> one, of the, one of these days, Reggie. <laughs> one of these days, <clears throat> zoom to the moon. <laughs> well, I like a lot of classic stuff. I I, I consider myself a class, pretty much a classy classic guy. Yeah, uh, I was born in 1983, but I, I I've learned a lot about the classics. You know, people you know, stuff that I mean, I like Buddy Holly for musician. 
That's so, so. <laughs> You're so. the greatest. Oh, wow. I, you know why you like the classics? Because what? the truth is, growing up, you were broke. Yeah. And instead of cable, you had regular television, and every Saturday and Sunday, they'd have I Love Lucy, The Monsters, uh, The Honeymooners. <laughs> Every Saturday on regular television. And home, I, I grew, <laughs> and home Improvement and Full House as well. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm before your time. But, no, I, I grew up the same way. I couldn't even watch our own Nickelodeon show. I didn't have cable at the time. People yeah. know that people were like, aren't you rich? Yeah, no, we're not rich. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's like nowadays, you know, there, there, there's so much crap on TV now. It's like, whatever happened to the good old classics? It's like they're disappearing through time anyway channels on satellite yeah so so anyway uh so speaking of projects and stuff like that are you working on any new projects uh, right now um yeah it's a big movie people are waiting in line to see this already we haven't even finished it's called unemployment oh okay yeah and, and who, who's all in that besides Wait, yourself you're gonna, unemployment Oh, okay, I get it. It's not really a movie. <laughs> Michael Bauer has a joke. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I mean, I still audition to this day. I just booked a, a cameo. Again, If it, it's a guest star when you're not famous, but when you're famous, it's called a cameo. Okay, yes. But I booked, I booked a cameo on a show called Apartment 23. Okay. Uh, I filmed that next week. Uh... I'm producing with my own little company, Generation 12 Films. We made a web series called Focus the Web Series. It's about a focus group and products, these insane, crazy products, and the adventure they go on in a focus group room. It's pretty interesting. You can check that out at focusthewebseries.com. Um, but other than that, I'm just, you know, taking care of my family, supporting myself, and I'm um, still working, you know, I'm not, I'm never going to be a has-been, I'm going to be an always are, yeah. if that makes any sense, um, and I'm just hopefully going to produce bigger and better things in the future, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult, but I'm definitely going to be entertaining in, in this business for the, the rest of my life, and I have a stupid Raiders show on YouTube, because I'm a big football fan, so every Thursday, I kind of put on this little fan-made Oakland Raider football show, and I just, I'm an idiot, so I just act stupid and say really dumb jokes for like a half an hour. Some people like it. I got like 500 subscribers, so that's kind of cool. Hey, that, yeah, that, that is cool because, you know, I, I like the fact when, when uh, actors can can do the, the, the YouTube thing because that's what I do. I mean, I'm not, I'm nobody either. I mean, I mean, you're more famous than I am, you know, and who knows, I mean, uh, I mean, I got over 500 original videos that I've done, but I'm still like a nobody. I still got maybe 1,600 subscribers. So yeah, you got a lot. I saw that. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to break into a couple hundred of yours. How about that? Um, <laughs> I think you actually. Of, I think you actually met a couple of my subscribers uh, at some conventions. They, uh, Sean C. Phillips. I don't know if you know that name at all, but he has a picture of. Uh, he just recently met you at a at a signing or whatever. He's, uh, you signed, uh, I don't, I forget what you signed, but it was like a cap on a water shirt or something like that, or something anyway. And then my friend Brennan Mitchell, does that ring a bell at all? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, a couple of them, I sent them like a DVD or a Blu-ray, and, um, sure, I mean, I, I'm sure I'll do the same thing with you once we get an address, but, um. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, they're cool, they're amazing people, I just. I talk to so many people sometimes. Yeah, it's, I can't figure you probably, you know, I mean, you may remember them a little bit, but, but they're big of course, fans of yeah. you. They're, they're big no, fans of you, it. yeah. And, and that's kind of how it. I got, uh, how I found you on Facebook a long time ago anyway, and, and I was just happy that we could do an interview one day, and I finally are doing it. So, uh, so the last question I have for you before we end the interview, uh, and I ask this to, to everybody that I interview, what advice would you give anybody that wanted to do what it is that you do? First off, I would say don't do it. <laughs> Again, people think, wow, that's the wrong answer. Like, why would you take dreams away from people? It's just that dreams are tough. And if you're not prepared, I mean, this industry and in entertaining, if you're in it to make a living, you're not going to make a living. You're really not. Like, literally, you need other skills to supplement your income, you know, because uh, if you're in it to become a star or to make a living, 
I'm just going to be honest, it ain't going to happen. Um, but if you're in it because you can't think of nothing else, or that's all you think about every day is making videos or writing or directing, then go ahead, man. Then pursue your dreams and you will make it. Because even putting a YouTube video that you made would be considered making it because you accomplished something and you did it. So um, I say don't do it if you're in it for the money and the fame, like half of the world is nowadays. But I say do it if that's all you know and that's what you wake up thinking about. All right, that's well, only... no, that, that's good advice. I mean, that's, you know, a good way to look at that. Uh, so I, I, I want to say thank you to you there, Michael. Uh, you're a pretty classy guy, you know. It's finally, nice you. Of, finally nice to get a chance to, to talk to you uh, live rather than on Facebook. <laughs> and who knows, maybe what, yeah, well, maybe one day we'll meet. You never know. Never say never, I guess, you know. Anything's possible. Well, you sound like you got a Minnesotan accent, so I'm, am I am I right in saying Minnesota? Yeah, Minnesota. <laughs> I'm 20 miles from the Canadian border and three hours away from Winnipeg. Yeah. Hey, not <laughs> bad, man. Maybe maybe my Raiders will play the Vikings or somebody up in that area, and <laughs> I'll take a trip, and we'll go out and get a beer, and we'll just, it'll be fun. Yeah, hey, you, you just never know. Nowadays, I believe anything's possible. I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not anybody special, but I, I look at these interviews for, for fun, so if it, if it helps me break me out one day as a partner at YouTube, who knows, but right now it's just for the sake of fun, so. <laughs> you know, you know you're from Minnesota when you got a reindeer as your window panel. <laughs> she... <laughs> yeah. All right there, Mike, well, thanks again for uh, being a part of the show, and uh, uh, God bless, man. All right, thanks, brother. I will talk to you soon. All right, bye.